In a recent video for the Pixel Display, I showed myself dragging and dropping an image from outside the running application into the Unity game that was running and having it appear. Now, some people like that functionality and asked me to show them how I did it. So in this video, we'll get to that. So for this video, I've set up a very simple scene. I've taken an asset from the asset store, in this case, this suburban neighborhood, and I'll leave a link in the description if you fancy getting this for yourself. And we've got a sign here warning of zombies in the area. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the drag and drop functionality that when I drag the image onto this application when it's running, then we'll see that sign change to something a little bit more cheery. So how did I implement this functionality? Well, I cheated. Like any good programmer, I went on Google and asked myself, has anybody already done this? And if they have, did they do it well? And if they didn't, could I change it to make it work? In this case, they'd done it very well. And I was able to use their class to get that drag and drop functionality. And here it is. It's made by Bunny83, and I'll leave their GitHub link in the description so you can go and get this code and check out what they did, and they can get some attribution for this. What they'd already done is they'd created all the external calls for Windows, and this only works in Windows, to be able to do this drag and, drag and drop functionality straight away. And as you can see here, I'm just gonna skip through it because you don't need to know about all the struts. What you need to know is they've got the external calls to Windows, and that's what these attributes and this functionality actually does. It provides an external call that it can ask Windows for the particular callbacks and functionality that they want to be able to know that this application has received an image from externally to the application. Then we can go down, lots of API calls that are getting done. And then in this section, which has been looks like it's been commented out, but it's actually just been defined out. And I've got a video on defines if you're interested in that, link in the description. Here we can see the actual meat of this particular functionality that's running in Unity. There's an install hook, which starts up everything and puts in the call to Windows to say, tell me when this happens. And then there's an uninstall for when you're finished. And then this is the callback itself. This is what comes in when that actual procedure has been done, when the drag and drop has been performed. Now, all I changed in this is the fact that this particular piece of code was sending back the point strut from the Windows API that they'd set up here. Whereas I don't want that. I want that to be insulated into this particular piece of code. And I changed it out to send back a vector two, a Unity vector two. So it's just a little bit neater. My code doesn't need to know about these external calls or any of these struts. All it needs to know is it's receiving a vector two and it's receiving the result. And that result is a file path. So all this does is says, this file path has been dropped onto your application and it's been dropped in this particular location. And that's all there is to do really with this particular piece of code. If you like it and you fancy having it in your own, then go to the link in the description and grab it for yourself. But let's implement this functionality. Let's write a class that receives that point, receives that file and puts it into our application. So back in Unity, what we'll do is we'll go into scripts and we'll create under my little utilities folder here, a C sharp script. And we're going to call this drag and drop receiver. And we're opening this up in Visual Studio. And we're gonna have it as a mono behavior here. And what this mono behavior is gonna do is I'm gonna say, set me a renderer, a renderer target. So that's the field we're gonna enable our designer to set to say, which renderer are we interested in dropping this particular texture onto? And if we set that up, There we go. Then in the start method, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna set up those install hook and that callback that you just saw in that class that we were just in, in the drag and drop class. So unity drag and drop hook, which 
they actually have it under their own namespace, drag and drop. And this one is install hook. And then the next thing they have is the callback itself on dropped files. And then I'm just gonna create a little function here called on drop files, which will receive that. We won't be needing this update function, but what we will do is on the destroy of this, we'll uninstall the hook. So on destroy, use your drag and drop hook, the uninstall hook. A nice way to clear up. So now we've got our path names and we've got our point coming in. Let's work on this. So we're going to be interested in one file from this, but you don't have to. You can take in all these path names and do loads of things. Let's say you drop a load of images to be put into some sort of grid pattern in your game. Then you could basically go through and take all of those files and work them through in the same way we're going to do here. But we're going to do a for each and we're going to say string received file in a path names. So these are the received files we've actually taken in. Now we use the file info class and we get that from the system.io namespace. And this file info that we're going to be do using is we want to know that we're getting the right extensions. Now, this doesn't care that it's actually a image file. What it cares about is that it's a file and we care that it is an image file. So let's say for instance, you had data files outside of your application that you wanted to drag and drop in. This is a great way for things like creating levels. Maybe somebody creates a level, they save it, you could save it off, and then they could drag and drop that level onto the game. Now, obviously that's only Unity because this thing only, uh, only Windows, because this thing only works in Windows. So file info dot extension, and then we'll just cast this to lower because weirdly I know a lot of people have uppercase extensions. It's weird, I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So we wanna make sure that this is either a PNG or the extension is a JPEG. Oh, and don't forget the dot. Oh. We're gonna say, okay, some people can't spell JPEG, so have it long. Please don't comment about which one you use. I don't care, it's JPEG or JPEG. Okay, so file equals received file. As I say, we're only gonna take one of these, so we don't care, we're gonna break out of this as soon as we found the one that's been dropped on. Now, we also wanna check here, we wanna make a function that says load image and that will be a file. So let's create this one next. The public void load image string file. Now, why have I made this public? Well, as you could see in the drag and drop functionality is they've declared this out because they've stated it doesn't work very well in the editor and Unity complains. And of course, Unity has its own drag and drop functionality in the editor itself. So you'll probably get some conflict there. But we might want to test this. We might want to say, okay, we want to know that our load image works. So you could create a custom editor for this that said, okay, open a file dialog. And there is an open file dialog if you're interested for the Unity editor in your tools. Receive a file by us searching for that file within the editor and then dropping it on. So we could test this load image without actually having to perform the on dropped files command. So that's just a handy little tip for you. So now we've got the image. We want to make sure that it's not null or empty coming in. And if it is, we'll return. We're not interested in blank ones. Now, obviously you might be saying, well, hang on, you, you've got something up here, but we don't know that we have actually received that. And if we haven't, we want to do a check to make sure there's an image there. Now we could have done that in this area here, but as I say, we've made this public so that we could test externally. And if we've made it public, we want to do that check within the functionality itself. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're getting. So what we're taking from this is we're going to say system.io.file.read all bytes. Because 
we're interested in the bytes of the actual texture itself to create the texture. So we've got our byte array now. Now we can create our texture. And we say text equals new texture 2D. And we could just set this as one and one. It doesn't matter. It's going to load it in. So here we go. Load image. And this is the data. So what this does is this actually creates this texture 2D on the fly for us. And that's super useful. We don't have to have a texture already set up with the right parameters and everything. We could just set this up on the fly. We don't care what we're receiving in. Now, obviously you could do this all ahead of time. You could have textures set up that you could fill and you could delete and you could fill and you could do this at a wake. And if I was doing a runtime application that was sensitive and needed to be optimized, then I would. I would create a texture ahead of time and I would specify that only textures could be this particular size for the grid and then have it run that way then I wouldn't be creating these textures every single time. And here's another point. We're gonna take the renderer, we're gonna take the material of the renderer, and we're gonna set that main texture to text. Now, some of you might be screaming at this point, going, oh no, he's using the material, and not the shared material, and he's not creating a material block or anything like that. But in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna create a new material, and I want to set that texture into that new material. I don't wanna overwrite any material that's already running. I'm just interested in creating a new material. Obviously that's not optimized. And again, if I was gonna optimize this, I'd be looking at material property blocks and shared materials, etc. especially if I wanted to set this texture across many uh, materials that are in uh, many of the same material across the actual game itself. So just be aware of that when you're creating and using this material.main texture. So let's save this off. We'll jump back into our Unity scene. And now in Unity, what we can do is we can put this into the scene itself. So we jump in our hierarchy, we jump in manager, we're gonna add a script here and we're gonna add this drag and drop receiver. Now, where do I wanna place this? Well, here's my billboard here. And under my billboard, I have my billboard sign, which is just a plane that sits in front of this. If I turn this on and off, there you go. It's just a plane that sits in front that actually displays the actual texture I'm interested in. So now we've got that set up, when this gets built, we'll know that this drag and drop functionality will target that particular billboard. Now, you do also, and if we look at the code, you do receive the point that's actually being sent. And if you're interested in having this only set particular billboards, if you're copying this functionality, and I'm not sure why, let me know in the comments, or you're putting it into a grid in a specific location, then you could use this vector two point to use the camera space and then cast off into the scene to say, okay, I've dropped on this point and on this point, if we cast into our scene, we can see that the billboard has been hit by our ray cast and we're gonna affect that billboard. Or if I had another billboard here, or if I had a set of grids, I could say, okay, I've dropped onto this point. We cast off into that point into the scene, we hit that particular grid item and it loads into that particular entry. So just be aware you can use the points there, but we don't care about that. We're just gonna drop onto the scene and want it to appear here. So it's time to do a build and test this piece of functionality. So a little bit of editing magic later and we have our build running. Obviously I didn't think everybody wanted to watch me do the build. So there you go, you can thank me later. So here's our game, here's our image. The image we're gonna be running in is remember Fred is dead and we'll take our image, we'll drag it, and we'll drop it onto our game, and there you go. The drag and drop receiver has run, and it's put the new texture into its space within our game. And that's everything there is to do, really, with this drag and drop. It's very, very simple, especially when somebody else has done most of the work for you. But now you can go to that location, you can pick up that particular piece of code, and you can run it on. And as I say, Everything, all the links will be in the description if you wanna go and get those. Unless you're a sadist and you want to copy off that drag and drop functionality from the scrolling in the editor, as I was showing you it. Please don't do that. Please go to the GitHub and, and get it for yourself. And if you like this video, leave a like. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.